शिव शंकर May my mind be calm and focused. It wish to mindful initiate actions. And the insightful perform rituals. The unprecedented mysterious being within all the living beings. Om Namah Shivaya. Om
because uh, you love this show, brother. And I know you read it and uh, thoroughly, and you certainly enjoy the glories of Lord Shiva. I want to welcome Veji also. Veji, it's nice to see you back at that same spot where you normally <laughs> sitting here, along with Megan, both of you. Bring back some memories of many years ago. And you are here uh, with us, and we certainly miss you. We miss all three of you. You and Megan and Annabelle. And now you've come back here. It's a homecoming experience for you and for the Trimurti. And I, I hope you like this new look of our Trimurti. Yeah, yeah. And I know it's a special occasion. I'm not going to give it a secret away. The reason why you came here for this, uh, this yesterday here. So welcome. And welcome with Bhai Bhai is here and Rabahinji. Uh, nice to have you all here. Uh, it's your own man there, as you know. So I know there's no place like home. You must feel always good when you come home. And all those of you who have uh, come here tonight, we certainly welcome all of you. But uh, Dilanji has done wonderful his puja since 3 o'clock. He was at it. From 3 o'clock until 7 o'clock, four hours, worshipping in very detail. All the deities accompanied by the other young pandits on Monday. Please give Padre Dilan all these pandits. <laughs> so, Marlinji, I know last week at this time, where were you? You were in the Ramayana Park. Yeah. Well, this week you're in Chupura. So, uh, you're here again, so we want to welcome you. And uh, Baluji is fresh from Suriname. Yeah, he's brought that energy back with him. As you can see, he smiles is, is wider now <laughs> since he came back. And uh, he went here for a wedding, for his nephew's wedding. And uh, we saw a little bit on Facebook, a uh, wonderful uh, event it was. So, congratulations to the right and room, Manu. And we're glad you went and you made it back safely. And next year we have, he's shining here tonight, Kaliji. Yeah. So, Kaliji, always a pleasure to have you in such a, you know, your voice is so. Melodious. So wherever you go, you always create that charm and that wonderful energy. So nice to have you here. So many brothers and sisters, uh, this seat is set for our first installment for the Mahashiva Purana. And uh, Acharyaji, we should, we can't bypass the Mahatanya. You know, you, you've got to read a book, you've got to start from the beginning, right? You got to, so the Mahatamya is like the authority in the text. And we have to, the Mahatamya has some important information about the greatness of Mahashivapura. And indeed, these four questions that you speak of, of course, are asked by uh, Shaudaji to Suchi Maharaj. And we shall take it, we shall look at the questions and we will take it from there. So, I do all of you are comfortably seated tonight and the mood is right. And the temperature is right, as so we shall commence our discourse tonight. Now let me begin by saying, in the Hindu pantheon, the unmanifest God manifests himself, or herself, uh, in a very mysterious way. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist, scientist to figure out how the unmanifest becomes manifest. The formless assumes a form. How is it possible? Well, there are many things that are formless which assumes a form. For example, if I were to ask you, what, is, what form does water have? Is it square? Is it round? Is it triangular? Is it rectangular? For all purposes, it is formless. You can give it a form. The form of the water will depend on the container in which it is placed. That's the form we'll take. Now, so that formless water, we're going to look at the journey of this formless water and see how, how it really relates to God, the, the formless God becoming the God with form. When the, the, the temperature is hot, the boiling temperature, that water, what happens? It, you put it in a pot and it begins to boil. What happens? You don't see the water disappear, right? Don't it? Keep boiling, boiling disappears, but becomes empty. Where did the water go? The water became what? Became vapor. So here we find now the form changes, name also changes. 
at vapor with ascent it goes up into the atmosphere and the process of condensation takes place in the atmosphere so there's cloud formation they really look up now you see what you see up there clouds so you don't say look there's water up there you call it clouds so the name changes form changes now at the right time those clouds would descend as precipitation so it would come down as rain it come down as snow come down as hail as the case may be so when you see this rain falling again the name changes form changes you say rain is raining you don't say it's watering from the sky is raining or it is snowing and when it comes down back to earth once again it becomes that formless water so it goes through these different changes these different phases but at the end it comes back to that formless it's formlessness formless state so likewise the lord that unmanifest form of god he manifests and there's nothing impossible for the lord so for the sake of creation he manifests as brahma for the sake of preservation of the universe he manifests as who yeah we need to use the door scripture right as vishnu and for the sake of the dissolution and the recreation of the universe he comes as lordship now the entire material universe constitutes uh, the body of ship you look at at creation for example all the things that have been created every single thing you can actually behold every object of creation carries lord shiva's dna so how is it possible well let's look for a moment before all of this came into be into existence what was there there was nothing there was look at the statement now the sentence there was only god there was only god then god decided to create to create the entire universe so he created all the planets he created uh, the earth he created all these things that we can see the oceans and the mountains and everything else and of course we do not subscribe to darwin's theory of evolution because if there's a creator what we see as creation is is uh, is intelligently put together by the lord if you look at the human body for example and you look at all how all these systems of the body are so well synchronized and they work so harmoniously with each other and they cannot work without each other for example the respiratory system the circulatory system you have the reproductive system you have the immune system uh, all of these systems so so working so nicely with each other and now this human body in itself is a miracle machine it is is the is the is work of the intelligent creator the creator this body that is cannot happen by accident or by evolution and you look at single cell of the body has an intelligence of its own a single cell has its own intelligence that is how powerful this creation of the lord is so before all of this came into being there was only god so god decided to create now the question is where did he get this material to create all of these things you know like suppose a home depot you could go okay i'm going to get some things from here and i'm going to create that you want to build a house and you go get the building materials and you build a house or whatever you want to build so there was nothing so god decided to create so you can you can assume that all the materials that were used for the purpose of creation all came out of the very being of the lord right everything came out of you now if you like for example if you look at the spider and the spider very very uh, skillfully weaves its web you ever seen a spider web and you see the spider web right look at the web now what is this web is made of of what the spider didn't go there and get something from the forest and decide to make a web it is a gland within the the, the creature itself it secretes a gland you see and that secretion is what creates this web so if you were to test the web you will find that the web carries the spider's dna correct has a spider dna so likewise 
If God, if all of these things were to come out of his very being of God, there is no question at all that every iota of creation carries the DNA of the Lord as well. That is why Tulsi Daji said, Siya Ram Mai Sab Jagajani Karhu Pranam Jodh Jodhupati. Wherever I see, wherever I look, I see my Sita and Ram present. And Bhagavad Gita said, Ishwar of Sarabhutana, God is present in all his creation. There's no place where he is not. So this entire material universe that we can see, it constitutes the very body of Shiva. It is creation itself which arises from him as a formation or as a projection of his greatness. So all you can see is it's a projection of the Lord. So creation is not alien or not separate from God. He's present everywhere. You can worship a tree as God. You put your faith in a faith or worship as God. You worship a stone as a God. Because you see God present in the stone. You worship the river as God. He's present there as well. So Bhagavan Shiva is here, there, and everywhere. There is no place where he is not. And if he's everywhere, he's within us as well. He dwells in the heart. Now, many times we fail to recognize his presence there because that presence is obscured by a veil of maya, delusion. Once that veil is there, then you cannot perceive that divine, the divinity of the Lord sitting right there in your heart. It's only when these layers are removed. It's like a mirror covered by layers of dust. The mirror is there. It does its work. But it cannot reflect anything at all because these layers are there. And once these layers are removed, then you can see that reflection in all its beauty. So once this veil of delusion is removed, then that, that beauty of the Lord shines resplendent through the heart and through every cell of our body. And that is what we want by the Bible to experience Shiva. You see Shankaracharya, when he was walking one day, and uh, Acharya Vilaji, you know, he goes as his Vedant. And he was walking, he was asked, a little young boy came up to him and asked him, he said, Who are you? Who are you? And that is a small question put him to think, Who am I? And the same question that we repeat, we ask you today, Who are you? So if one were to ask you the question, Who are you? The first spontaneous answer would be, Your name. I am so and so. What about if you didn't have a name? How would you identify yourself? Says, so, well, I am a male or a female, or what, or by a profession, or by a gender, as the case may be. So he put him to think, who am I? Am I what I see in the mirror? Am I this physical costume? I can't be this. Because if I were this, then when this dies, then I die. And I do not die when this body dies. Because I am deathless. I am imperishable. I am indestructible. I am incomprehensible. So then, he put him to think, and then he wrote the Nirvana Sakam. Mano Buddha Hamka Chitta Minaham Nacha Shrutva Jihave Nacha Grana Netri Nacha Bhyurma Bhumir Natejo Nabayu Shidananda Rupa Repeat Shivoham 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 I'm not the mind, I'm not the intellect, I'm not the five senses, I'm not the five constituent elements of this body. What am I? Who am I? I am that soul of knowledge and bliss. I am Shiva. I am Shiva. He says, how can one be Shiva? Well, the real you is no different from that Shiva. This Atman is no different from Paramatman. Paramatman is his ocean. And the Atman is a drop. So the soul is a drop that has been separated from this ocean. And the soul's journey is to go back and to reunite with this ocean. 
It may take several births, but along the way it gets lost. So many things go wrong. And sometimes you make some progress, and the next birth, you retrograde. You have to come back by miles again. See? But if using the analogy of the ocean, if you are a drop of the ocean, then for all purposes, my dear brothers and sisters, you are the entire ocean in that single drop. That's what you are. Chidananda Rupa, Shivoham, Shivoham. That is what it means. So Bhagavan Shiva, he pervades all the entire universe. He is here, he's there, he's everywhere. And that is the Shiva whom we shall glorify for this entire sojourn and to whose glories we shall listen. Now, I'm not an expert in the scriptures, Acharya Ji. I am just a student. And if, if I can be qualified as a student, I'd be happy. We can't be really scratching the surface. This book is so thick, you see. And we have so many, so many scriptures like it. It's very, you can't, no one can call himself a scholar. Maybe there are others out there, but I will just do my little part here in trying to bring to you the messages from the text. So we shall begin from the beginning, as the text begins with the Shiva Puran Mahatmya. Chapter 1. Gauri Gira Ganapati Girish Guru Ganga Hishiranai Shiva Mahatam Yabhasha Tilak Janahit Likhan Bana Om Shri Ganesha Namaha Om Shri Shavnak Vacha He He Sutan Maha Praga Sarva Siddhanta Viprabhu Akyam Ahim Me Katha Saram Purana Naam Visheshataha Saputraya Ascha Sarbhati Viveko Vardate Katham Swamika Nirasa Ascha Sajane Kriyate Katham Jivvasham Suratam Prapta Prayo Ghore Kala Viha Tasya Sanjayo Ghore Kehi Vijyate Paramayanam Yadasti Vastu Param Sreya Sanjaya Damamuttamam Pavanam Pavananam Sadhanam Dadhadhunam Yena Tat Sadhane Nashu Shudhyatam Avishishata Shiva Prapti Bhavik Tantam Saranir Malat Chekasam Om Namah Shiva Om Namah Shiva Shavnath Ji Bola Hai Sundh Ji Maha Pandit Sab Siddhant Ki Jane Wale Maha Prabhu Mujhe Aap Vishesh Karke पुराण की कथा का सार सुनाइए सपुत्र भक्ति से विवेक किस प्रकार बुद्धि को प्राप्त होता है सज्जन अपने विकार किस प्रकार शोधन करते हैं सो आप कहिए इस घोर कलयुग में जीव असुरता को प्राप्त हुए हैं उनके शोधन का प्रकार क्या है सो आप कहिए जो वस्तु परम और उत्तम कल्याण दायक है जो पावनों की भी पावन तथा उत्तम माधन हो वह आप हमसे कहिए जिस साधन से शीघ्र ही आत्मा शुद्ध हो जाता है हिता सदा निर्मल चित्त वालों को शिव की प्राप्त होती है सो इन और पूरा मैं जैसे स्क्रिप्चर्स ऑफ सनातन रूप डिवाइडिंग द श्रुतिज एंड स्मृतिज द श्रुतिज आर दैट व्हिच इज हार्ट and the spriti is that which is remembered. So that which is heard would uh, pertain to the Vedas, the Vedas and Upanishads, and the, the Vedangas, the Vedantas, those Shastras. And the spriti is that which is heard is referred to the Puranas. So we have 18 Puranas and 18 Upapuranas. So the 18 Puranas, the, the, the Shiva Puran is the Mahapura. It's one of the greater Puranas, very authoritative because it uh, is a complete work by Ved Vyas 
that deals with uh, uh, exclusively with the glories and the powers of Bhagwan Shiva. So these Puranas, you will find, they all have this discussion between Sutji and Shaunak. Now Shaunakji is this spokesperson of all the saints who are there. And you have to just imagine an assembly whereby Sutji is the Vyas, and he is narrating the, this, the glories, the exploits of the Lord. Now if all the sages were to rise up and ask questions, there will be pandemonium. So they all appoint one person who is Shaunak, and he now asks the questions, not only on behalf of those sages present there, but on behalf of you and me as well. Doubts are going to enter our minds in this age in which we live. Doubts are going to haunt us, that will need clarification. Then that is what uh, is represented here by the question posed by Shaunaji to Sukhji. And that question, of course, representing the questions coming from all the, uh, the Satan sages. Now, questions are important. You know, back in the days, if you were to ask a question, you know what kind of reply you're going to get? If you were to ask your parents a question, that was considered very disrespectful. You did not ask. If you didn't understand anything, you can't ask. Because it's considered blasphemous. It means that you don't have faith. What are you asking for? You question anything. You just do what I say. Now that is not right. Because if a child has a doubt, you see, for example, the parent performing puja, and you ask, well, well, Ma or Dad, what is this puja about? Who is this Murti? What does he represent? Now, isn't that a fair question? Now, if you don't know the answer to, the, to answer the child, then you have to you have to search for the answers. You can contact those who know the answers, and you can do some research. You can read up, and you must provide some kind of a reasonable explanation to the child. Now, that is how we learn by asking questions. And you look at all the scriptures of Sanatana Dharma, dear brothers and sisters, they are about question and answer. You look at Ramayana, for example. Lord Shiva is this dictating to, to Parvati Ma, the essence of the Ramayana. She's asking questions and he's answering in the conversation uh, between uh, Kagvisuddha and Garu, between uh, the saints and sages. It's question and answer. The Satnaran Katha, for example, again, there's a Sudji and Shaunaji. One asking, the, the Shisha asking the question, and the Guru answering the questions. In the case of the Srimad Bhagavat Mahapuran, Raja Parichit is asking the questions. Sri Shukdevji Muni is answering the questions. So all in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna asks the questions, Bhagavan Shiva is giving the answers, right? So in all of these texts, there are questions. So questions are healthy. And anyone who comes to you with a question, you must find the time to uh, answer these questions, or remove the doubts from the mind of those who ask the question. If whether it's a non-Hindu or whether Hindu, whoever the person may be, questions are, that is the reason why in this Quran, that you have questions being asked. It's not that these Satan sages, they doubt the knowledge of Suji, or they, they, they don't believe uh, what is being taught, but they do so for the benefit of all of us. They by themselves are like Suji, who they are well versed and very learned in the scriptures. So Shaulak is saying that, O Suji, of great intellect, in the first, first verse, he says, Dehi Sutam Mahapragyam Sarasiddhanta Viprabhu. That he is Sutji Maharaj. Mahapandit Sarasiddhanta Ke Jane Wale Mahaprabhu, Mujhe Aap Vishesh Ke Purano Ke Katha Saar Sunaye. You are the knower of all the philosophical principles. You are so learned, so accomplished. Please narrate to us the essence of the Puranas in detail. Then he goes on to say, Saputra Spradyam Sabhatte Niveku Vara Dekatham. That O Sutaji, Saputra Bhakti se Vivek kis prakar budhi ko prakota hai? Sajjanatne vikar kis prakar shodhan karte hai? So aap kahiye. Now, how does good conduct good devotion and the power of discrimination flourish. This is what this, this verse means. How does good conduct, good devotion, and the power of vivek, of discrimination, how do they flourish? How are the base feelings, base feelings of uh, dispelled by men? Base feelings. Base feelings would be 
uh, feelings of lust, the anger of all of these enemies of the mind, these are base feelings, are base desires. How can they be dispelled uh, from the minds of, of good men? And number three he says, Yadas nistaram param sreyam sanfreyana muktamam pavaram pavananam sadhanam tarvadhanam He says, O Sudhaji, most revered saint, jo vastu param or uttam kalyan dayato jo pavano ki pavano tha uttam sadhan hoi vaha aap se kahiye He says, in this terrible age of Kali or this ghor Kali of me, jeev asurta ko prat hoi hai Unke shudhan ka prakar hai. So, aap kahi hai. So, in this terrible age of Kali Yuk, people have become asuric. And, and Acharya Ji have explained that word asura very nicely. Yes, people here yeah, who have certainly uh, lost contact with their true nature. So, you call called asura. So, you have this sur and asura. So, in, uh, in, in ordinary terms, with people who uh, demonic in character. What uh, in this age of Kali Yuk, people have um, drifting in this direction, with the path of unrighteousness. So, what is the effective mode of remedying this? How can one uplift oneself from this sea of Kali Yuk in which we live? You know, Kali Yuk is to, to get blamed for a lot of things. Anything goes wrong over oh, this Kali Yuk, what are you going to do? We in Kaliyuk, this Kaliyuk. Well, who is Kaliyuk? What is Kaliyuk? When God created the world, he, what he, is he created? What he created? He created Satyuk. Now, there is a vast difference between Satyuk and Kaliyuk. Because in Satyuk, people walk the path of truth. People perform their tapasya, austerities, penances, worship, everything. So everyone lived a righteous life in Satyuk. But then Satyu degenerated and ultimately it became Kaliyu. Satyu became Treta, Treta, Dwapar, Dwapar, Kaliyu. It is described by metal, so Satyu is a golden age, Treta is the silver age, Dwapar is a bronze age, and Kaliyu is the, the what? The iron age. Come on, you gotta learn these things. Kaliyu is the iron age. Now, of all trees for only iron and rusty. Right? Yeah. When iron is prone to rust and, and decay. So this is where we are, Kalyuk. Now, how did Satyuk become Kalyuk? Mankind. Mankind. We were the ones who transformed uh, Satyuk all the way into Kalyuk by our behavior, by our attitude, uh, by our way of thinking. You see this this will be the degeneration along uh, the ages. So now we're in Kaliyu. But don't feel bad because in Kaliyu, according to the text, Kaliyu is the easiest now uh, amongst all four ages for us to attain liberation. Because when in those previous ages people used to go sit in a cave and do all these uh, tapasyas for so many endless years and uh, undergo all these rigorous penances and so on, now in this Kaliyu, by chanting the name of the Lord and by simple pujas, uh, one can free oneself from this bondage of this iron age. So this is the question. Shonat is saying, in this terrible age, tell us what is the effective rule of remedying uh, this, the ills of this age. And then, fourthly, he says, tell me about the greatest means to achieve uh, the holiest, holiest of all the, these modes of nature. What is that practice which which particularly purifies the soul. What is that which enables a man uh, to attain Lord Shiva? How can one attain Shiva in this age? So these are the questions posed by Shodaji. He says, Sadhan se shidrihi, atma shuru jata hai hita, sara nirmal chitwala ko shiv ki prati hoti hai. But in Sutaji, the master, now he replies, Suta Vacha, Danyasvam Muni Shadulam, Shravana Preeti Lalasa, Atu Vicharayam Suddhiyam, Vachyam Shastram Mahottamam, 
सर्व सिद्धांत निष्पन्न हत्यारी कविवर्धन शिव रूपम करम दिव्यम श्रीवत्सम रसायनम काल व्याला महारात्र संसिधान सकल सुतम शैवं पुराण परम शिवी रूपम परामणि सरत कुमार से मुनि रूपम देशांत पर आदरा व्यासे मुक्तान सुक्षेतान करी जाना मिताय च सुध जी बोले हे मुनि श्रेष्ठ तुम धन्य हो जो कथा श्रवण करने में तुम्हारी प्रीति है इस कारण मैं बुद्धि से विचार कर इस उत्तम शास्त्र को कहता हूं सब सिद्धांत में युक्त भक्ति आदि का बढ़ाने वाला शिव का संतोष करने वाला परम दिव्य रसायन रूप का रूपी महासर्प का विध्वंस करने वाला परम उत्तम शिव पुराण है ये मामने यह शिव जी का कहा है और सरद कुमार मुनि के उपदेश से करोगी प्राणियों के निमित्त व्यास जी ने इसको संक्षिप से कहा है so sut ji now is replying and he says first of all he commends this saint he says you know you are dhanyo uh, you are indeed blessed all of you are blessed because why you are blessed why were they blessed jo katha shravan karne mein tumhari priti hai you are blessed because you are here with a desire to listen to Now that speaks well. Your visit here tonight was by in no way a coincidence. You came here because you were summoned not by or sure than necessarily, or not by me or by anyone else, but by the Master Himself, Rachiba. He wanted you to be here tonight. He wanted you to be here. Consider yourselves blessed. If he didn't will it, it would not be possible. So many things could have gone wrong. So many people would have wanted to be here tonight or be anywhere where his name is being recited. They might wind up in Jamaica Hospital or some other hospital or the the, the funeral home, mourning the loss of someone, or they themselves being gone. So many things go wrong. So many things. The desire might be there, opportunity is not there. When opportunity meets desire, see it as a blessing from the Lord. The Lord wanted you to be here by simply listening to His glories. You are blessed, and it's the best thing you can do with your time. The best investment you can make with your time is to sit in the mandir, to sit at the feet of the Lord, to imbibe His glories, to, to focus on Him, to have a direct and make contact with Him, and leave here feeling energized, feeling. Feeling uh, spiritually charged by His divine presence in your heart, my dear brothers and sisters, these moments do not come often. Every day, every moment, someone is saying goodbye. We will say goodbye one day to others as well. Time is of essence. Every single second that goes by, every minute that goes by, you cannot retrieve it anymore. It's gone. Every day that goes by is gone. Every birthday you celebrate the news is one birthday less you have to celebrate. Each day you wake up to greet is one day less you have to live. How many remaining we don't know, but you do know the time you have, put it to the best use, and this is the best investment you can make with your time. So that's why Sutta Ji is saying, all you saints and sages, you are blessed. To Dhani Ho, why? जो कथा श्रवण करने में तुम्हारी प्रीति है इस कारण बुद्धि से विचार कर उस उत्तम शास्त्र को कहता हूं बिकॉज यू कम हियर विद सच एन ऑनेस्ट फर्स्ट इन योर माइंड टू इन बाय द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड हेन्स आई शेल फॉन्ड ऑफ द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ दिस कथा इंटेलिजेंटली एंड आई शेल रिलेटेड टू यू सो दैट इज द रिप्लाई सुत जी टू द क्वेश्चन ऑफ द शॉर्ट And he goes on to say that O saints and sages, Kal Rupi Mahasarp ka vidvans karne wala Param Uttam Shiv Puran hai. He is he who ne ya Shiv ji ka kaha hai that it is destructive of this great fear Kal Rupi uh, Sarp. You know Sarp means Sarp means snake. So it's like a python. Kal Rupi Mahasarp ka vidvans karne wala. 
So there's this, by listening to this Mahashiv Puran, he said, by listening to this glories of the Shiv Puran, it is destructive of the great fear of this python called death. The python of the, wraps his nose around you. He uses that illustration. But when this python of death comes and wraps his nose around you, then you're gone. So, you know, we as human beings, we suffer from what you call mortality anxiety. The animal knows that. that. The animal don't stress away when they're going to die. They don't know they're going to die. Maybe just before they die. So they, do, they go about their life doing the regular things, what they do. But we, we stress over that. I mean, we, we are the, most of us, if not all of us, there's this fear, inherent fear of death. That death is coming, death is going to come, and then when death comes, what happens? And it takes or snatches our loved ones away from us. And you can't see that person anymore. Snatches us away from our loved ones. That fear, inherent fear of death is there. And it's called, it says, that this the Kaalubi Mahasarpaka Vidwans Kaniwala Param Uttam Shupuran. So by listening to this Mahashupuran, by, by digesting the knowledge of the Mahashupuran, it helps us to rid ourselves of this fear of this python of death. And the word python is you because generally we fear python also. You see a snake come, what if I say the snake? Kill him. <laughs> the poor snake went about his business. Maybe the snake come to say hi. But you want to kill it. Why you must get, oh, kill him before you kill me. No, that is, you know, the creatures. Try killing that one in the neck of Rajiva. So, that, the, 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 the analogy of Python, as you see, that fear is there, that inherent fear of death is there. So when you, through knowledge, you can overcome this fear of death. Then you begin to see death not as an enemy anymore, not as a monster anymore, not as monstrous in nature, uh, because then that realization comes to you that Shirananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham. And not this body. When death comes, death comes as a blessing, and you go gladly. You give up this mortal coil, and you travel because you know exactly where you're going. You know that the real you has not die. So that fear is overcome with the knowledge of this scripture, the knowledge of the Bhagavad Shilpa, says Sutaji. Or Sarat Kumar Muniki of Deshe Kalyogi, Pranyuki Nimit, Vyasi Sis Mains and Shilpa Hai. So he says, for the benefit of the people in this age of Kali Yuga, Ved Vyashi, he abridged all of these uh, teachings of the Mahashya and he delivered it to Sanat Kumar. So Sudhi said that the same knowledge now I shall uh, repeat to you, O saint and sages. Now he goes on to to speak about the glories of the listening to the Mahashyapura and the recitation of the names of Lord Shiva. Now, we have to understand that this, this, the knowledge of this text is like nectar to the ears. And what it does, it purifies you, it purifies your thought process. Your entire body becomes purified by simply listening to these teachings of the text. Now, there are rules for listening also, because all of us have come here. Number one, the orator must be able to communicate the message, it will become so intelligible that whoever, all of you are listening, you will be able to understand what I'm saying. If you don't understand what I'm saying, then you're lost and we're just wasting time here. I'm wasting my time. You also sit here, but you're not grasping anything at all. So you listen with the mind. The mind must be attached to Lord Shiva. And the mind must be prepared to absorb this nectar flowing from the text. 
and only then will benefit you. Like this man was walking and he was looking for a moti to buy. And he came up to a merchant and in India. And this merchant had three motis for sale. And but they were tagged differently. The price was different, even though the motis looked identical. So the first moti was going for 100 rupees. <clears throat> the second one was going for 500 rupees. And the third one was going for 1,000 rupees. So the man approached the merchant and he says, my friend, please explain to me why this price is so different because I look at these motis and I don't see any difference at all. They all look identical to me. So he says, no, my friend, they're not identical. He says, well, how do I know? He says, you put them to the test. He says, look, take this, we're going to get a glass of milk and pour it in the first moti here. So we he tried to attempt to put this glass of milk in the first moti here. The milk would not go anywhere. The milk just fell out. He said, well, this one here costs 100, 100 rupees. So let's test the second one now. The second one, he put the milk in here, he comes through the other here. That one is 500 rupees. Third one, 1,000 rupees. Pour the milk in here and it went right down. Didn't go anywhere. It went, it digested the milk. So he says, you know, the people are like this multi. Some, you know, I, you can preach, the preacher will preach, our charity you can preach also, and you can preach and preach and preach and nothing registers. Like the first multi for 100 rupees. Now, but how would you preach? Nothing, nothing goes in. Why? Because you're here, you're not here. You're physically here, but you're not here. The mind is all drifting all over. Especially if you have a problem. You're thinking of that problem. You're thinking it's so busy. All over it, you're thinking about it. Sometimes you mind, I'm waiting for done. <laughs> right? Because other things are more enticing. Other activities or other conversations more enticing. You know, imagine this scenario. You go home tonight, pick up your phone, and you call somebody. And you're telling, oh, when I went to Mandir, you know, it's a beautiful katha. I was listening to this Shiva Purana, Lord Shiva is so great. And, and this person is listening to you. And then, you know, that call waiting. Somebody doesn't want to get hold of you. And then, uh, he said, hold on, let me see who this is. And this person said, hey, I got a juicy piece of gossip to tell you. You're not going to give your ears. We're going to tell you about this person. What a person whom you also know. What? Yes. Oh, hold on. Don't go. You hold right there. Hold this line. Don't go anywhere. Wait, wait. Switch back to that person. Listen, girl. I mean, our boy. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. <laughs> it was the intention. <laughs> Listen, we gotta continue this conversation next time, okay? I got a very, very important call here now. Let me see what this person wants. Isn't that true? So there goes this Qatar Shupra, everything goes now. Gossip takes over now. See, the ears want to listen to gossip now. You try to listen to this gossip. Now, what is the benefit of it all? So, my dear brothers and sisters, when you come and you, you the satsang, you prepare the mind, condition the mind, and you listen. So, Goswami Tulsi Dasi says, you a very beautiful doha of the Balkan Dharamai, and he gives us the rules for listening.
So a sin, you have, it can be divided into two parts. You have sin of commission and sin of omission. When you commit a sin, things that you do to hurt other people with this body, that is considered a sin against God's laws. You hurt someone, for example, that's considered a sin. Whether in your thoughts, in your words, in your actions, is considered a sin. And then sins of omission, if you didn't do anything, but you still commit a sin. Well, how? For example, let's say you have your mother in your home, and you know your duty is to feed her and take care of her every day, and you fail in your duty, you didn't do your duty, you didn't do it at all. Then that is, you're committing a sin by not doing it. So you have sins of commission and sins of omission. Now people who are prone to sin, and of course, nobody is pure in the world, nobody is perfect. We can't say, well, this person is the purest of the pure. And in human, in human body, you're subject to error. A mosquito bites you, what are you going to do with a mosquito? You're going to smile and say, hey, you know, have a nice day. You tell me have a nice day afterwards. All right. Now those are sins. You take a creature's life. Now you have greater sins and lesser sins, right? You walk on the ground here, you kill an ant, you don't know. And unknowingly you do that, they're considered sin also. So there's sins of commission and omission. That is the reason why Suji is saying that for those people who indulge in sins, knowingly or unknowingly, in simple actions, uh, this Gyan Yesh of the Mahashiv Puran uh, certainly goes to purify uh, such people, purify the mind and purify uh, their souls. So he gives an example here, and the example I think drives only the point. Uh, he will say to us, So the story goes, Kirat Nagar mein ek gyan durval brahman rata tha. Wah daritri ras ka vishne wala dev dharm se parang mukh tha. Sanjya stan se brasht vesh vritti ke parayan dev raj naam vishwasi jar ka tagane wale tha. So in a in a city called Kirat, Kirat Nagar, there lived a brahman Dharadrata, he was extremely poor, deprived of the basic necessities of life. And he was also very deficient in Brahmanical knowledge. So he was not a learned person and he was not a wealthy person. And his name was Devaraj. Gyan Durbal Ratatha Daridri Raska Vishdevala Devdharam Param Rukta. Sanya Stansi Vrasht Vish Rukti Ke Parayan Devaraj Nam Vish. So, he never practiced daily Sandhya prayers he, or, or the ablutions uh, pertaining to his duties. So, he, his, his mode of living resembles someone equivalent to uh, who swayed from the path, to put it in a, in a nice way. Now, besides that, he had a track record. Whereby he never, he never hesitated to receive credited persons, the Shukran verses. And he went to the extreme. Even though he was of noble birth, birth he was the child of a Brahmin, uh, but his actions were other, otherwise. Brahman Vai Chatribaishratha Anijari Ko Marga Anek Prapanse Unka Dhanne Leta Hai. Now he went to the extreme, would, would kill and rob people and, uh, and uh, rob them of their the belongings and their wealth and everything else, people of all classes. So by, by far means he accumulated wealth. But a sinner he was, not a slightest part of that wealth was utilized in virtuous acts. So this was his life. Someone who lived a very, uh, lived by, by nefarious means, nefarious conduct, that's what he has. Now, one day he went to take his bath by a lake 
एक समय ब्राह्मण तरा के स्नान करने का गया एक भाव के नाम वेजिया का देखकर वह विदल हो गया विवल गया और सुंदर सी धनी ब्राह्मण को वश में देखकर प्रश्न हुई और बाप से चिंत प्रतिमान हो गया एंड देयर ही मेट ए ब्यूटीफुल लेडी बाय द लेक एंड ही वाज सो एक्सट्रीमली डिलाइटेड अपॉन सीइंग दिस पर्सन देयर हर नेम वाज शोभावती एंड ही डिसाइडेड नाउ टू मेक हर हिज वाइफ सो अगेन ही ट्रांसेंडेड ही विद बाउंड्रीज ऑफ डिसेंसी एंड ही फर्दर ड्रिफ्टेड इन टू दिस सी ऑफ सिन उसने उसे श्री और उसने पति समझाए प्रकार और काम के बड़ी भूत होकर वो काल तक विहार करने हुए आसन शयन पान भोजन क्रिया के स्त्री पुरुषों को तत्पर समय बिताया माता पिता साथ पति बारंबार बार होकर भी पाप मान सो इस पर्सन बिगैन एंड ही ब्रूक ऑल दी कन्वेंशनल रूल्स एंड ऑल दी स्पिरिचुअल रूल्स ऑफ हिज ड्यूटीज एक दिन ईशा से रात्रि में माता पिता और अपनी बहुत बहुत से अपने सोच में मार डालो उसे धन न लिया वन डे वन नाइट एक्चुअली ही वेंट इन विलेज हिज पेरेंट्स होम माता पिता अपनी बहू के एंड हिज सिस्टर इन लॉ वर स्टे स्लीपिंग द नाइट सोते में मार डालो और उनका धन न लिया ही ही किल्ड देम एंड ही स्टोल देयर वेल्थ अपना और पिता जो धन था काम सकती उनको कर वो सब उसने बेचारे को दिया एंड देन ऑल दिस मनी वुड गिव वस्तु का भक्षण करता हुआ मदिरा पीने के इच्छा की वह ब्राह्मण नीच उसके साथ पात में भोजन करता था एंड देयर ही वाज एंडेजिंग एंड पार्टेकिंग मीट एंड ऑल दिस प्रोहिबिटेड फूड सो यू कैन सिंपली जस्ट इमेजिन जस्ट यूज योर इमेजिनेशन वैन पर्सन ही He was a sinner of sinners. एक समय देव योग के प्रतिष्ठान में आया वह सारू जनों के युक्त एक विचार में देखा वहां यह ब्राह्मण जड़ से फिर स्थित हुआ है उसने ब्राह्मण से शिव संभरी कथा श्रवण की सो यू नो थिंग्स डोंट गो ऑन फॉर एवर दे कम्स अ टाइम वेन देर इज डिवाइन इंटरवेंशन वेन सर्टन थिंग्स कम टू एन एंड सो he aged as he went along he didn't give up all of these evil habits so one day by chance he happened to visit a city called pratishthan and in that city he was there alone and he saw from his vantage point he saw a a mandir of lord shiva and in this mandir saintly men had congregated devotees were there in this mandir so he was there every day he was looking at this mandir now remember this was person who was steeped his life was steeped in sin there was no place at all for anything and no virtuous conduct he saw this mandir there and it so happened that as he stayed in that location there he was afflicted by an acute fever and this fever hit him so now he was feeling very sick but as he was there next to this mandir what happened there as he was observing just me gyanchakshu or he was there वह ब्राह्मण ज्वर से पीड़ित हो स्थित हुआ उसने ब्राह्मण मुख से शिव संबंधी कथा श्रवण की ही वॉज लिस्टिंग नाउ ए ब्राह्मण वॉज देयर इन दिस मंदिर एंड दिस ब्राह्मण वॉज रिलेटिंग दिस कथा ऑफ लॉर्ड शिव शिव कथा शिव संबंधी कथा श्रवण की सो दिस मैन देवराज नाउ ही इज लिस्टिंग टू दिस कथा विद ग्राफ्ट अटेंशन ज्वर से पीड़ित हो वह देवराज यम दूत से पाश बंधन प्राप्त कराकर बल से यमपुर को ले गया लॉन्ग 
गण पूर्ण लिखा है इसी समय त्रिशूल हाथ के लिए शिव के गण सर्वांग के भस्म लगाए शिव के रुद्राक्ष पहरे समथिंग स्ट्रेंज हैपन देर वेन इस यम यम दूध के सोल होते यम लोग देर ऑल्सो पेड शिव गण देवराजी they seated him on a wonderful aerial chariot and they were about to start the journey to kailash and as they were going to kailash to the abode of lord shiva there was a great tumult arose there uh, in the city of mir dharmraj himself yamraj came out of his palace and on seeing these four messengers who looked like lord shiva himself Uh, he honored them in accordance with the custom of bowing to them, paying his obeisances to them, and then he, of course, through his vision, he came to know everything, came to know of this man's life. He knew of the circumstances, and out of fear, he did not question these noble attendants of Shiva. So, being honored by them, they went to Kailash, and they handed over this soul to Brahman to Lord Shiva. Who is the very ocean? A person says the Mahashupra. It says, "Abhi puji to kar kailash ko gaye, aur paarati ke sahit Shiv ko se paap hani ke ichha se diya." Param paavani Shiv Puran ki katha dhani bhi hai, jiske shavan matr se paap atma ko bhi mukti hoti hai. Sarashu hi mahasthan aur param dhan ke hai. वेल जाने वाले पंडित ने कहा है शिव लोग सब लोगों से ऊपर है अन्य दूसरे प्राणी धन से लोभ से मंडे है तथा माता पिता बाड़े को मारने वाले देवराज ब्राह्मण क्षण में उस स्थान में जाकर मुक्त हो गया भगवान शिव रिसीव द सोल ऑफ दिस मैन व्हाई बिकॉज द डाइन मोमेंट हिज हार्ट वाज फिक्स्ड ऑन लॉर्ड शिव Prior to the exit of his soul from his body, he observed the katha of the Lord. This katha, like a powerful detergent, washed away all his sins. Now, Bhagwan Krishna, in the Bhagavad Gita, reiterates the same point. Chapter nine, verse thirty. A page is adura charu bhajate maman yaba sadhu reva samanta vya samika vya vasiko hisa. He says, Lord Krishna says. If the vilest sinner approaches me with a heart full of faith and surrenders unto me, then I, he becomes redeemed. I redeem him because of his righteous will. Chipra mauti dharmaatma, dharmaatma, shastra shanti nikashiti, kaunte ya pranijai ne bhakta pranishiti, and he rises up to become a dharmaatma, a noble soul. Now, Balmiki is a great example. One who found redemption by muttering the name of the Lord, Ram, 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 even though, even though backwards. And he became that great saint poet that was able to document the glories of Sri Ram, and who is being venerated and honoured thousands of years after in this time in which we live. And this Valmiki Ramayana, of course, gave birth to Ram Chaitmanas, which is, of course, is gospel for this age, as we know. So Bhagwan Krishna reached the same point, and again in chapter eight of the Bhagavad Gita, he says, "Antakala Jamaamu," and that in the very moment of death. Whatever the mind thinks of at that moment, whatever you're thinking of at the moment of death, that's where the soul goes. Now, the Lord Krishna does not say this. You read the Gita, you see it is a death. So, whatever object the mind is fixed on, that's where the Atman goes. So, he says, think of me at all times, so that when the death comes, automatically your soul comes to me. So, here this man is sick. He's dying. He's he has this 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 very high acute fever, and now he finds himself helpless. As he looked back at his entire life, his life was simply wasted away. He spent all his days committing all the sinful activities. Is that a sin that he, and you can imagine, he didn't commit? He was a sinner of sinners. But at the very end of his time, and this goes to show 
couple things here. Number one, the power of redemption of Bhagwan Shiva. Now he is he is the, the master. I refer to him as the master because he has all the all the powers that he has. Had. You know, like Thanksgiving Day, the president pardons a turkey. He calls it a presidential pardon. And also before he leaves office, he can pardon people who have been incarcerated. That's so he uses his presidential power, regardless of what kind of committee did. He says, hey, your your is a cessation to your to your prison term and you're a free man, then you're a free man, no questions asked. He has that authority. He's endowed with that power. So likewise, no one can question the power of the Lord. But one Shiva is all powerful. And if the power of this Qatar, you surrender to the feet of the one. Now I'm not saying this doesn't give anyone a license. Now you're gonna come and sin all your life and then you say before I die, I'm gonna turn over to Lord Shiva. I'm gonna surrender to him now and I'm gonna straight to Shiva. Look, you think you manage to do that? It's not a bad idea to surrender before you die. Not a good idea to commit a sin anyway. But the point is, if I were, if you were to ask all those people who died, does that give you, if, if you can communicate with them, wherever they are, and if they're, if they're able to tell you, hey, what were you thinking of before you died? You want me to tell you, Ali, Moni, Ali, Ali, All the loved ones, people do. The, the general tendency is that that to which the mind is most attached to, automatically, the thought goes there before the soul leaves you, before you expire. So most naturally, the things that, the material things in the world that you're going to think of. Now if you're attached to the Lord, you have a love of the Lord, and you, you totally surrender to Him, then you can imagine that when that death would come, that moment for you to leave the world, the soul exit the body, then the mind, consciously and consciously, you're absorbed in the thought of the Lord. And that in itself is a ticket to liberation, to freedom. So the point here is, and this is the point we must we must take home with us tonight. Nobody is beyond redemption. No one is beyond redemption. You can't say, look, my life is too sinful now, there's no hope for me. There's hope for everyone. Now you have you can you have to turn over a new page. And once you turn that page, you gotta stay in the page. You can't go back where you were before. Because you can pardon you one or two times, you know what happened when your child commits so many wrongs. And you forgive the child one or two times, what happens after that? So, the, the power in this glories of the Guan Shiva, listening to the Shiva Purah, is a panacea for the maladies of this age of Kali Yuga. That is what is required, my dear brothers and sisters. Because as this man, as he listened to the glories of Lord Shiva, his devotion for the Guan Shiva only increased. So, when he died, pretty much he lived as a sinner. But he died a devotee of Lord Shiva. That's a difference. That's the reason why his soul went to Shivalok and not to Yamalok to be punished for his sins. And Bhagwan Shiva received his soul. Because what he received there was a devotee of his. Even though the last moment, the time was very short, which he dedicated to Bhagwan Shiva, but it was it was not too short, it was long enough. That is the nature of Sarah Shiva, who is so forgiving, who is so loving, who is so accommodating, and who is so dear to the hearts of all his devotees. So the Shiva Puran says, Suchi Singh, Oshonat, Sarah Shiva hi mahasthan, o padam bhaan kaya hai, ve ve jane wale panitu ne kaha, Shiva Lok, Sab Lok ko se upar hai. The Lok, the abode of Bhagwan Shiva. All the great noble scholars have expounded that Sarah Shiva, the Lok, is the greatest abode. And that is where all of us would like to, to go after we would have left the world. Devaraj, he attained that liberation. His soul instantaneously reach that supreme law of Bhagwan Shiva. So my dear brothers and sisters, uh, this <clears throat> is the Mahatamya of the uh, Bhagwan Shiva Puran that tells of the greatness of listening. Now there are rules for listening, as I said, and uh, 
if you have to follow the rules, when you perform this yagya and you follow the rules, then of course the results will be manifold that we shall uh, harvest from this sacrifice with parents. So we all in our own, in our own way, you may not be in the form of a yajna, in the quietness of your home, you sit before your altar for the Murti, you chant Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva every day, you get the darshan of the Lord, you make your offering to Him, and you seek the divine blessings. I feel very blessed that I managed to visit this Kailash Parvat there recently, and this Lake Mansarovar. You know, I must tell you something. Twenty five years ago, when we were making this, this Kailash here, I had no clue what Kailash looked like. I never saw it, I never Googled nothing. Mr. Walker was there, he was making this, these mountains, and I was standing at that spot there, and I was directing him what to make, how to make all these peaks and all this. Yes. And when I... Now, I didn't know about this monster world lake either, but it existed there, right? So, this fountain here, I'm just telling you how this, how Lord Shiva is great, this fountain here was not a big plan. We had no, no, no plan to make this. So, we, I, I told this guy who was making this base, I said, can you just make a base to put there in front of the mountain where I want Shiva, we get a, we're going to get a, a sitting Shiva, six feet, and he's going to sit there in front of it. Now, he said, okay, you're going to make a base. When he made the base, he made his base here out of steel at the bottom there. So when I look at that, I said, well, we can convert that into a lotus flower. And then, now we can make a pool at the bottom there. So all these thoughts just came one by one. When I went to the Mansur Lake, the lake is round also. So what we did created this Mansur Lake without even knowing. I'm going to bring some water from the Mansur Lake that I brought back. We're going to put it in here also. Uh, in this, in this Mansur Lake. So this is how Lord Shiva wants it. See, he inspired with the thought. And when you finish, when it's all said and done, Kailash is there and Mansur is there. But I happened to visit the real uh, place there. Acharji, I don't know if you went there. Yeah, but it's a good, very good experience. It was a treacherous trip, you know. Uh, why my brother's going to the next? Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, it's a good place you must go. And you'll make it. Yeah. It's more than 25,000 feet high up there. And the oxygen is very scarce up there. My problem was. Uh, well, anybody's problem will be the same thing, short of breath. Because there's no oxygen to breathe. You're breathing, but you're not getting oxygen. And you move from here to there, which is, is really, it affects you a lot. For the other people who are there, they're from Nepal, so they live in mountains, they, they're trekking and climbing and hiking and so on, so it's fine for them. But I had a little problem issue, but it, it was not a big issue, so I'm not sick or anything like that. Uh, but it was a trip that was well worth it. And I can tell you, Lord Shiva is there with Kailash. You can feel his presence. He is there. He is there. You know, one, only one person climbed that Kailash mountain. He was a Buddhist monk whose name was Milarepa. You, you can Google it. And when he went there, he saw Lord Shiva sitting in meditation. And he came down back and he told all these people, he said, no one must ever climb this mountain again. This is a very sacred mountain. And from that day onwards, nobody is allowed to go to touch that mountain, it's so sacred. So it's sacred to the Buddhists, it's sacred to the Hindus, to the Jains, and to the Sikhs also. And the government of China has preserved this, this mountain, preserved all these sites here, the story sites, and they doing a fabulous job there. Very, very clean and very neat and very tidy. And they control, strict control of who going to visit and who not going to visit. But it is certainly a pilgrimage of a lifetime. And I feel very, very blessed to go there and to have the direction, I brought back all piece of rocks from there, from the Kailash mountain also, and so water from that. I got a chance, nobody allowed to go bathe in the lake, this monster were lake, they prohibited. But the, the guys, our tourist guides said, listen, we're gonna make an exception, we're gonna give you a chance, and you gotta hurry. And I went there, took full opportunity, and went and I swam in the thing there. It was, it was so nice, so beautiful. Came out there, the puja on the banks, and the monster were lake. And uh, to feel, feel blessed. At least, you know, your purpose in life is fulfilled. So, my dear brothers and sisters, Bhagwan Shiva is, is very great. 
and uh, we're simply chanting this magical formulas, chanting his name with devotion and faith. Uh, you know the results that you can experience for yourself. So I'm going to conclude here tonight because we have a lot more in store for you for the next uh, three sessions. But again, in conclusion, we want to thank Mahadev Ji again. Uh, now this is a man who run marathons here. He's 24 states, 24 out of 50 states, he did 24 already, including New York Marathon, which is like about 20 something miles, 26 miles. And in all of these races, uh, his marathons, he never comes last. He's always like ahead of so many hundreds, sometimes thousands of people. Isn't that so? Can you stand up? Look at his audience. Stand up. Look at the audience. Now you look at this man over here. Remember, we didn't stand up. 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 So you must give credit to him. And that is, I mean, that is keeping yourself healthy. And uh, probably okay. a picture here, a charity. But you don't see him over there because he's here. I mean, I don't see him here, I don't know where he is now. <laughs> but he's a wonderful, wonderful soul. And so I want to thank you, Mario Ji, for this such a good yesterday here. And thank all of you for coming out here on Thursday night, this evening. May the blessings of the God Shiva be with you. Let us uh, conclude now with chanting this kirtan.